Hey, hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the control component series with reactive form. In this video, we'll take a look at the text field from Material UI and we will use it as a numeric input, the numeric field for our car sale form. This comes with a challenge because we will have to do some manipulation of the value when it is received by reactive form. And it will also be the basis of the serialization and the deserialization mechanism that we will use for date pickers and more advanced components in the next few videos. So I hope you tag along and let me know in the comment section below what other components we should check out in this series. And please remember to like and subscribe if you like this type of content. Let's quickly take a look at what we have created in the previous video. So we have just the checkbox that automatically selects itself. It selects itself because the controlled checkbox component that we have in the car sale form receives a value after a specific timeout. So we're simulating some data fetching, a synchronous update uh, for the entire form. Let's add a text field that will allow us to pass in the price of the car, which will force us to add an additional element to our controlled inputs, which is the ability to parse values when they are set into the field and when they are read from the field because text fields will work with strings but in the form and in the submitted data they want to send to the server we want to work with numbers and if we have a common way of sending this information over we will be able to um, parse other types of uh, data like dates or maybe even com more complex objects and in order to do that let's start with the first step looking at the docs so I already have the text field that we're going to use uh, opened and we know that it can be controlled, that it has these two values, the value and the on change callback, which in combination will allow us to control uh, what values we set and also react when the element asks for a change. So I'll just copy over this text field. I'll place it here on the screen. Let's make sure we can import it from the library. And we also need a state for it. We're still okay with using this form as the isolated environment because we don't have a lot of things going on here. But if this was more complicated, maybe a code sandbox or some other page would have worked just fine. Let's see. All right. So we have it ready for the next step, which is taking a look at the focus and the uh, error properties. So we're still at step one practically on, on the docs, but we need to make sure we have everything before we proceed. So it seems we can set the ref on the text field. Uh, after doing a little bit of digging, we find that we have this property input ref, which is on all inputs and text field happens to be an input. So uh, we have if we take a look at the API of the text field, a list of uh, subcomponents that make it up. So let's see first if we can have a input ref. And we do. And if we hover over, we see that the input ref can be anything, which is a little bit confusing, but we'll see that it's actually an input. Right, so I've just created the input ref. I've set the timeout to focus it. And now if we refresh the page, we should see the text field being focused. Let's go ahead and do that. And it seems it's working fine. Now we also know about errors. We know the errors and error handling functions in a certain way in material UI. So we can go ahead and create a controller that has the error and also passes on, passes on the ref from the active form. So let's go ahead and do just that. I will duplicate this entire controller. We will need a price, a new, a new field in our schema for it. And we just need to replace, if I'm not mistaken, maybe this entire thing or just the control. So let's try it and let's see if uh, just replacing the control is enough. 
it might not be so it seems our label so we still end up with the label but we already have a label uh, bundled inside the text field so we no longer need the font control label so we can do something like that and now we can just pass all the control properties that we saw in the checkbox and i'm gonna go ahead and do that like so and of course we have a value we don't have a checked we have a label yes he's gonna be uh, asking price the ID is going to be asking price and I think the, the value will probably be an empty string. So again, if we pass in a default value instead of undefined, when this component is used in a, an environment that doesn't have default values, it's just going to be empty and it can become controlled by the reactive form system later on. So dynamic properties and so on should work just fine. So let's go ahead and add the price in the schema so i'll add the price here which is a z number and it is at least let's say 100 we're not going to worry too much about validation messages now our typescript error should go away because now price is part of the form and the only thing we haven't checked and here typescript helps us apparently uh is the setting of additional values coming from outside the form so i'll have another async value async state for the testing uh purposes here it's gonna be async price by default it's undefined and afterwards it's gonna be a number so let's leave it at that and set it here to 1000 and then pass it over in our control props and shortly after this we will change this to be um, just one state value and we'll drop the use memo which just served this purpose for the explanation in the previous video all right it seems it's still complaining that we're not sending a price here we might be sending uh, undefined so we'll always send that value or maybe we can change the api and allow default the the values that are controlled to be a partial object of the values meaning some of the values can be left out and that way if they're left out they're undefined and the default mechanism that you write in our control components picks up we no longer need the handle change and set states they're already handled for us by the echo form and i think we're pretty much done and that's it i think we are able now to at least see uh, the text field in action and maybe some errors it's probably gonna fail with an error when we start typing something else here and pressing enter and that is correct as expected we see that we expected the number and we received the string and this is the thing that we need to work on right now this is the part that we're not handling yet with our controlled uh, inputs or control components so let's quickly define what our expectations are for this particular text field we would like our number field or numeric field to send us a number if it receives a number so let's say we get one two three we would like it to give us the number one two three so react form on the on change handler should receive one two three as a number but if we have something else like foo bar we would like react form to also get foo bar so if we cannot correctly parse the string we would like to just send it over to Yaku form and let the uh, Zod validation take things uh, further and show us the errors and so on. What happens if we don't have any content? Well, I think we can just pass that uh, like so. And we also need to take into consideration what happens if Yaku form has zero. So let's say we receive the value zero from 
the server or something like that even though i know we're actually doing a zot validation that doesn't doesn't allow us to have values less than 100 now what happens if theoretically this field has a falsy value there we also need to make sure that the falsy value correctly becomes an empty string and maybe we need to do the same thing for null and uh, undefined so that's what we need to take care of right now so the value first we need to make sure it becomes an empty string only if it really is null or undefined we need to make sure that basically this evaluates to uh, zero if we use the value zero i think there's a really easy way to do that i think we can just evaluate this in the browser and we actually know that the double question mark operator will return zero so this is fine and null is fine as well and undefined is also okay now we can go ahead and override the on change handler that we pass in from yahoo form so basically here we can write our own method we can get the event and let's take a look at what we have here let's take the value and see if we can parse it and if it is a number send it over as a number otherwise let it be a string so i'm gonna do number or numeric value let's do parse float because why not and let's console log the two let's console log the value the numeric value let's just call field on change without any alterations for now and see what we get so now if i press another number things are fine we get the string and that string becomes a number we can even have uh, decimals i think yeah there we go but what happens if i add a character maybe at the end hmm we're not getting the character we're losing this character at the end and it's even worse if we lose it in the middle of the string it transforms into just the number 10 and if we press and send the character at the beginning uh, we actually get none so as long as we start with the character i think we're fine but if we have like this something 100 uh, pesos for example we are losing that string for for some reason so we need to take uh, into consideration how we treat this case as well meaning maybe the length should be the same so let's do value length equals numeric value dot length actually to string and then length first so now we have the same length but if we add additional characters we see we no longer have the length constraint satisfied and if we just type in characters we're fine as well so if we have not a number when we parse the string or when the parse string is not the same length as the resulting number it means we need to send over whatever is in the input otherwise we can just send the number so let's also get the length values into an if statement so if is none the numeric value or the length of those two are not equal we will change the field with the string value we'll send over the string value otherwise we will send over the numeric value and let's see if this works and there we have it uh it was a mistake on my end i should have checked if the length is different not if it's equal let's see if my fix uh, resolves the problem and it does i'm able to add characters at the end of the string if i press enter i have 
a ZOD validation. I am able to send and submit the form and characters are working fine now. So what happens if we want to parse a different type of value out of the field? And what happens if we want to pass some specific value that is not a string or a number that is easily serializable into the text field? In order to do that, we will probably have to refactor and create a reusable component for this controller. And we will do that in a future video where we'll focus solely on refactoring and uh, grouping everything together and making uh, fields reusable. We're not going to do that now, but we want to make sure that we have some sort of indicator that this needs to be reusable and it needs to be prop based. And that's it for this video. Hopefully this was useful. Let me show you what we will do next. In the next video, we will take a look at the date picker, but this time from a different component library from entity to see if the method that we have uh, explored so far works for other component libraries. And also the date picker will help us make sure that we choose the right abstraction for this uh, value serialization and deserialization uh, mechanism that we will need to expose into our usable uh, controller uh, components. So if we integrate the date picker from AntD, not only do we see if our methods work with a different library, but we also have to deal with dates and dates will have to be serialized and deserialized in a certain uh, way. So if you think that is interesting, if you think you want to see how I'm going to integrate the date picker from MTD. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like the video so other people uh, like you see it. And uh, I hope I'll see you next time.